known about 1990s yet. The original idea was for it to be a 10 hour long miniseries, with George Romero at the helm of director. But due to scheduling difficulties with the remake of Night of the Living Dead, Romero had to back out. Bill Skarsgård, who portrays Pennywise in the 2017 remake, was born the year that this miniseries came out. Tim Curry was actually reluctant to take the role at first, fearing all the makeup time he had to sit through again. I kind of don't blame him seeing how he had to sit through all that during Legend. Most of the actors have come out and said that they actually avoided Tim Curry during filming, due to just how creepy his portrayal of Pennywise was. The little guy playing Georgie even told him one time that he was scaring him, which Curry replied, gee, I'm so sorry, but that's what I'm supposed to be doing, and you're supposed to be scared. Hello, I'm Pennywise, the dancing clown. Put your down here. Here's a few things you may not have known about Demolition Man. During most of the fight scenes with Wesley Snipes, he had to purposefully slow down his movement speed. He just moves so damn fast it looked blurry on film. A subplot involving John Spartan's daughter ended up getting cut out of the final film. But you can still catch her in the film. That, that, that's her right there. Dennis Rodman is credited the look of Simon Phoenix as inspiration to his platinum hair days. The role of Simon Phoenix was first offered to Jackie Chan. So he turned it down because he never played a bad guy in a film before. Ever wonder how the three seashells actually work? According to Stallone, two are used like chopsticks, while the third is left for final cleanup. Here's a few things you may not have known about Wes Craven's new nightmare. The premise of this movie was intended to be used on Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warrior. But the studio rejected it at the time. The film revolves around Heather Langenkamp having a stalker. Which in real life at the time, she did have a stalker. Wes Craven asked her permission to weave it into the story. As a way to get little Miko used to cry during some scenes. His mom would leave the room and his dad would tell him, Your mom is dead. Poor little toot. Craven had intended on asking Johnny Depp to play himself during the funeral scene. But he never got up the nerve to actually ask him. After running into him later, Craven asked him if he would actually appear in the movie. To which Depp replied, Of course, you should have asked me. <laughs> Here's a few things you may not have known about the crew. It's common knowledge that the late Brandon Lee lost his life during production due to an accidental misfire. But did you know that actor Michael Massey stopped acting for a year after the accident? Of course, it was no fault of his own. He was just so traumatized he needed a break. He would also go on to say that he had nightmares for the rest of his life and never watched the film. Being unhappy with the way the makeup looked after being applied by the makeup department, Brandon Lee talked the director into letting him apply his own makeup the night before, before he went to bed, so it would look more naturally worn the next day. All the scenes that were shot after the accident ended up being digitally composed, although there was a mask that was made directly from a mold of Brandon Lee's face, but it unsettled the crew so much they ended up destroying it and just going the digital route. Here's a few things you may not have known about Event Horizon. The first cut of the film had to be cut down about 30 minutes, and was way more graphically violent. They ended up having to cut about 30 minutes of the movie to keep from getting the NC-17 rating. Which honestly really sucks, because this movie should be up there with like Hellraiser, it's one of my all time favorites. The visions of Hell were inspired by a couple of 16th century renaissance painters. Hieronymus Bosch and Pieter Brugel are two of the main ones. Toward the beginning of the movie where Dr. Weir opens his blinds to see the event horizon, the sound effects of the blinds was took directly from the Doom game as a bit of an homage. The gateway design by director Paul W.S. Anderson was also an homage to Hellraiser in the lament configuration. 